Happy New Year, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recapping the year of 2023, so stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife, and with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content, getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. What is going on, everyone? Happy New Year to you all. I hope you guys had a safe and fun holiday and enjoyed your whole holiday season, for that matter. And today, we are going to be recapping capping the year that was 2023, the highs and the lows of the year. And we're going to be showing off clips throughout this past year from this channel of all the videos that we have done. And this is basically one of the, my favorite videos that I film because I love seeing where we started at the beginning of the year and where we are now and seeing the transitions that have been made throughout the year for me personally, for the animals and seeing everything in between. I think it's just a really, really exciting time. It's definitely been a different year for me for sure. A lot of challenges this year a lot of things looking back on the prior year recap video seeing all the things that I wanted to get done and not really getting a lot of those things done and truthfully that is okay I know a lot of people can relate to this where you put a lot of goals out there that you set at the beginning of the year or during the prior year and you're just trying to make those goals and you just fall short or they just don't ever happen to begin with and that is okay that is a big important thing that I think a lot of people need to learn is that you don't need to be putting your down if you fall short on certain things or if things just don't work out the way you want them to you know I mean a lot of things come up for a lot of different people in a lot of different ways and it is just one of the things where you just have to see how you react to those certain issues and how you bounce back and how you go and move forward with those kind of challenges and that's exactly what this year has taught me for sure despite a lot of other things but you know that is basically what happened this past year we had a lot of setbacks for example I was trying to breed a whole bunch of different projects. I was super stoked with what we were going to do. And then we had that huge winter storm, which knocked me out of power for nearly two weeks, basically, and basically made this whole reptile room. I had to make it vacant because I don't have a generator, unfortunately. So I had to pull everything out because it literally dropped to about 35 degrees in here in February. And that was tough. During that time, I was just safer to cut breeding and just focus on the animal's well-being. Because at the end of the day, that's what was most important is doing those kinds of things. But more beyond on just the breeding project side of things. We had a lot of different things that I was trying to do in the works and projects and stuff like that. Traveling plans, all these different things. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do those types of things. And that's one of my goals for this upcoming year is to do more fun traveling kind of videos. And hopefully we can do those kind of things throughout this coming year. That's my goal. And like I said too, guys, this channel is just as much mine as it is your channel. So if you guys have any suggestions down below, I would love to hear your suggestions on video content that you would love to see this up coming year, please, by all means, leave a list of different video topics down below. It helps me tremendously when you do those kind of things for sure. So definitely leave some topics down below that you want to see covered. I have kept and noted some of your suggestions in the past when I have asked for them. So definitely have kept those noted, but remind me again of some of them and I will definitely make sure that they are on the list as well too. Like I always say, guys, I appreciate all of your guys' support. You guys are the reason that drives me to make these videos every single Monday. And I hope in the future sometime that I am able to produce even more content throughout a week and maybe doing like a Monday Friday video which was my goal last year but just didn't seem to happen because of just life and everything that was going on this past year I was overloaded for sure beyond just the reptile side of things it was definitely a difficult thing to balance my life and things that were going on in it but we're trying to get into a better thing and that's going to be my goal for this coming year is kind of easing and just kind of mellowing out and just kind of getting myself on a nice little level platform form that I can balance and then going from there. That's what I want to do. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about New Year's resolutions after we do the recap of this prior year. So let's cut the chatting just for a little bit. We'll revisit these topics just at the end of this video. Let's sit back for now, relax, and enjoy the videos from this past year. So let's watch. Now I did sex this snake. It is actually a female, so I'm going to be referring to this girl as a golden girl because she is an older snake herself. She's actually older than me. Now 
I'm 26. This snake right here is actually 27 years old, which is crazy. So this snake actually came to me in a rehoming situation from someone that was moving out of state and they just couldn't take this snake with them along with the other snake that they had as well. They had two ball pythons, both 27 years of age. And it was just such a treat to actually see that because I mean, you can see that she is still well taken care of and everything, no issues with her whatsoever. Really just came in down to a situation where they were happy to take them with them, but they would rather them go to a proper home tripod. And that can be a little tricky to get them off of there, but he is just an amazing, amazing snake, that's for sure. So now jungles are not something that I necessarily want to get into like full on, but I mean, they are just such a really cool species that I've always had an interest with. Ironically enough, before I got into ball pythons, I was also thinking and considering getting into jungles and carpets in general, because I think they are just so incredible. And because I also love Australian species, I figured since I have Stimson's pythons and also Woma pythons, why not get another species from Australia, the land down under, with this guy right here. So that's what we did. We got Ozzy, and it was just a great situation. Like I said, he was a rehome. The guy was moving out of state, kind of like the Betty White situation. And he was just like, I really just need someone that's going to take really good care of this animal. So I was like, I will definitely 100% take really good care of this guy. It's definitely a good symbol of hope. And I just want to start with this guy to share this with you because it's never easy losing an animal and I would hate for anyone to be sharing the same circumstances as me or you may not have lost an animal whatsoever maybe you missed out on a project or something or missed out on an animal you wanted you know I mean it could be whatever scenario whatever bums you out whatever if it's reptile related or not I promise you I mean things there is light at the end of the tunnel and I think Nemo is kind of a beacon for that so he's definitely my beacon of hope that's for sure and I just love this guy to death and I'm super excited for the future to what we produce with this guy I mean he's got some amazing amazing genetics and coloration to him that's for sure definitely a lot more curious than he was when I first got him I mean he's definitely been moving around a lot more and everything before Andy would just always stay balled up and I was just like okay he's just kind of playing as a pet rock but now he's a lot more curious he's moving around a lot more and number four on my list and this has probably been an animal that's probably been on my list of dream species of reptiles probably for about 15 years now believe it or not and that is the Mexican spiny tail iguana specifically the pied pectinatas. I think those are phenomenal looking. I think they're just so incredible. You guys know I love anything pied and this is what they look like. They're no exception. These guys look incredible. Now as a lot of you know, iguanas are a lot to take on as you guys know. I mean, you gotta build a real solid bond with these guys along with all these other reptiles as well too. But they are a lot and a huge undertaking as well. They require a lot of maintenance. But I think just in general down the line, I would be happy to take on either a Mexican spiny tail iguana, the pied pectinatas, the banana pectinata, even a rhino iguana. I think that would just be so rewarding because I've seen the interactions and relationships people have built in the past with these guys and it's just so incredible. Yeah, I tell you what, man, I can't I can't wait to get where's those scissors? I'm gonna practice a little bit here. Oh I won! I didn't even know I won! I was I was stressing out! I was yeah! like, I thought there was gonna be a bonus question. Here. You get to break your hair now! <laughs> I'll take it. I'd rather get braided than cut off. Alright, well, Nick, you ready? Get those scissors. I can't believe I, I lost. Monsieur, would you like a haircut? No. I don't know how you put it. Do you put it around the front or the back? <laughs> Give me that measure, taper measure. We gotta get 10 inches. Mike, you help me out here. No, no, yeah. no, I, you don't need to touch up, man. I, I'm a professional. I'm gonna say help this crazy reptile guy cut my hair. What can you do? I might wanna get a little touch up. At least I use some sharp scissors. So there you have it, guys. Uh, I still have a ponytail. Nick does not. Let's believe it or not. And they don't actually have fur or feathers. So you don't have to worry about if you have allergies, getting allergic to your pet snake. I assure you, you will not have allergies to these guys. You may have allergies to certain bedding types. So also keep that in consideration. But I assure you, you will not be allergic to the snake itself. So that is also a great thing about snakes is them being hypoallergenic. So in terms of hypoallergenic pets, keep this in mind. You can either get a pet snake or you can get one of those hairless cats. And if you get one of those hairless cats, you're gonna have to clean the litter box which in my opinion is pretty gross these are scaleless corn snakes so these guys I mean definitely caught my eye you said this one's in shed or they're, yeah they're in shed yeah I mean but even still I mean their coloration on these guys is just incredible and I mean they're super soft too I mean that goes with any of the scaleless animals but Jeff what got you into these uh, I've had corn snakes for almost 40 years yeah. now 
And uh, I started back in the early or in the mid '80s breeding yeah. corn snakes. Never knew that there was so many different kinds. When I started sure. out, there was normals. Right. <laughs> and then albinos came along, and then I really got intrigued by the scaleless stuff. And then uh, a couple of friends of mine had them. I got really interested in them, so I thought oh, I'd give them a try. I'm trying to breed them into some other things that people haven't yet. Yeah. To see if I can come change some things nice. in the corn snake world. That change the alteration a little bit. Yeah. I love that. So working on some things. Shed sometimes they get a little cranky here sure. and there, and then if they're on a hunger tear you got to watch them a little bit but Absolutely. that's about it other than that they're super smart they learn routines super well and they're super curious animals really cool so how long have you been in business have you been working with mainly australian species um, and and i've stuff been like keeping that, reptiles since i was 14 okay. uh, pretty non-stop and i'm 45 okay um so That'll, that'll date me a bit. That's um, okay. <laughs> it's crazy to think, look back down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, um, I used to work with a lot of rare pythons, and then I went into ball pythons for a while, and then I decided I wanted to get back into rare pythons, and I yeah. just went full steam, and I was buying up pretty much anything I could find. During that time, I definitely was using some of my tips from my past video of what to do during the winter months for your reptile. If you guys haven't checked out that video on what to do in these kind of scenarios, definitely check that video out. But long story short, the power was going to be out a lot longer than we expected. At the beginning it was around 500,000 people without power and I think the grand total was about 700,000 people without power. It was absolutely crazy. I had to do what I had to do. It was definitely something that was not taken lightly. I had to take every single reptile, every single snake, every single everything out of this room and it was definitely a, um, a very long and uh, grueling challenge and it was something that it was like one for the books, I have to say. Going, you know, across here, we said this building was available, so we took it So this over. wall was actually here. So there was a wall right here. As a matter of fact, there used to be a TV on this wall right Get here. Out. That's right, you know, <laughs> and we used to do movie nights here. Oh, yeah, like okay. 1. 0. So we just put a bunch of, like, chairs here. People come in after we'd watch, like, you know, like Anaconda, the movie, and stuff like <laughs> Fitting. that. We ended up tearing this wall out, just this opening here, and we did 2.0. Well, we started it in 2019 okay. uh, and worked on it all the way through March of 2020. Wow. And then March of 2020, we opened on March 13th, 2020, and we added all the new enclosures. Now, the thing that we really saw from this side to this side is that yeah. we wanted to have like bigger enclosures, more glass, more viewing, you know. So that was you know, a big goal. That was like, yeah, because we, we kind of learned that the smaller enclosures are cool, and you need small enclosures sure. for the smaller animals. Sure. But, you know, instead of having 50 small enclosures, I'd rather have 10 big enclosures, Makes really sense. impressive enclosures. So we did, you know, Diddy and Dixie, this giant enclosure here. We did Anaconda with this giant enclosure here. Which is impressive. Like, when you walk through these doors, like, your eye immediately draws here. Yeah, like, what's in here? Because what's you, you can hardly see what's in here because she, one, blends in so perfectly, yeah. and two, it's so huge. Set up to quarantine the animal, make sure the animal is all okay, and to take care of this animal the best of your ability right from the get-go. That's always important. So having an enclosure set up, a game plan set up, having everything that this animal needs and requires, that's always important. Now, Reptile Expo in general are basically a one-stop shop for all your animal needs. You can get an enclosure there, you can get all the supplies there, you can get the animal there, but you want to make sure ahead of time that you have everything prepared for this animal, I would say is the best way to go about things. Yeah, that would be my second tip is to try not to impulsively buy an animal. Make sure that you have a designated space for the animal to go straight into to quarantine and be set up in before you even buy the animals. <music>
to see this guy right here. So oh, yeah. I know that the last show you didn't bring this guy, but I'm so excited now. He's up to a size and you brought him the highlight. What do we got right here? Oh, this is a lavender albino sunset. Wow. Yeah. So this is the one that after each shed is just getting brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter, for sure. So tell me, what have you been, like how did this project come to fruition here? Oh, so basically we just bred a, our original sunset male to a, a lavender cinnamon back in the day. Okay. So we had a, we have a 1.3 group. Yeah. We've been breeding them ever since. Yeah. That, when they got up to size. And uh, it took us three years and like nine clutches. Three years. Three years and nine clutches. And we were making just lavenders and sunsets, but we never made the double visual. Right. And, so this uh, is the pinnacle for the project. This, oh yeah, this is like three years in the making over yeah. probably 30 eggs. So yeah, oh we got gosh. super lucky. It's not a frog actually, but what it is, is you ready little one? this little baby redfoot tortoise right here. As you guys know, I love tortoises. I'm on a tortoise hitch. And these little baby redfoots right here were just too adorable to pass up. It is not clickbait. I do actually have some tough news that I have to share with you guys then, decisions that it was not easy to make for me personally. And that news that I'm going to break with you guys, I'm not going to hold you off, is, is that this enclosure, as you can see right here, is empty. This is actually where my boa boa was. Boa, she did not pass. She's totally healthy. She's a wonderful snake, that's for sure, and she's doing great. And I'm so happy where she is now. Now, it's definitely been something I've been contemplating and circling around for a little bit here. And really what it's coming down to, basically, is I don't think it's the right time for me to have a boa. And I just don't think it necessarily fits in with all my other projects and all my other plants currently. I would love to get another boa one day, but I just don't think currently it's in the bill of things that I want to work with. And I hope that makes sense with you guys. It's definitely something that I didn't take lightly, like I said. And I rehomed it properly as well. Well too. I gave it to someone I trust and know fully that they're going to take well care of it as well too. And they work with these animals and it's actually John Chosmer from John Chosmer Reptiles current laws to make sure that your pet is not actually illegal there as well too. That is also something huge to consider. And if it is something that is detrimental that you have no choice and you have to move to that place, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I mean, there are definitely places, rescues and places to rehome your animals properly rather than just releasing them into the wild. You never want to do that whatsoever. So there are always different outlets in terms of rehoming and rescuing animals there are always places that do that so definitely keep those things in mind first and foremost that's for sure and I don't want to let this topic die down it shouldn't just be a trend this is something that is very very serious stuff is definitely stuff that is impactful not only for the people involved in the animals involved also for just keepers in general this is definitely a topic that's very important so the topic in, that we are discussing is the Holy Thursday massacre that happened a couple weeks ago the, uh, the Thursday before Good Friday. Basically what happened was it was basically FWC, Florida Fish and Wildlife officers entering a snake room owned by Chris Coffey. Basically the intent for these officers was to go in there and seize and kill these snakes that he was owning. Most of these species being Burmese and reticulated pythons along with a gravid boa constrictor which is actually legal to own in Florida which was co-owned by Chris Coffey along with Bill McAdams as well too. And great, he is very very big and he is just an endless eating machine that is for sure so he is not missing any meals that's for sure but I love that boy to death he has an amazing personality overall I love him he's great and for people that are new to the channel yes he does only have three legs and that was something that actually happened to him when he was actually a younger tegu and I think for whatever reason I think basically he got into a scuffle with another tegu one of his clutch mates and basically his leg was taken off like so so he's doing fine it's kind of like a ghost limb for him doesn't bother him whatsoever sweetly blends in yeah she's one of my favorites wow that is super oh, it might super be a male. cool i think it's a male i'm, I'm sure right there i'm sure look at that uh, do lab there yeah that's so cool they have black mouths too yeah so like are these guys these guys aren't actually considered chameleons though no, mm -mm. So they're, these, they're anoles. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They are anoles because of the dual apps and everything like that. That's the perfect environment for it because it's just going to blend in. Yeah, like I, entirely. I should have it a little warmer so she can actually be the normal gray color that you see them at. Yeah. But it's so warm in here that if I put another heat light, I'm, I'm afraid that she'll fry. Yeah. Morning geckos in here. Nice. Those guys also self-produce. <laughs> like mad. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you. Oh, you don't have to open them up. I know oh, I don't mind. They'll pop out. And... Dude, I'm, I'm sure I have morning geckos in this house I know. everywhere. I remember the last time they were kind of running rampant. 
Wow, look at all those eggs. Uh, how do they squeeze them all in there? Yeah. yeah, how do they get them all in there? I mean, it's incredible. They're pretty big. I mean, especially all swollen up with eggs, you know? Yep. I mean, that's not a, a tiny space whatsoever. This past week in Miami on May 10th and 11th. So I was not one that made it down to Florida to go to these meetings in person, but I did watch the live streams from start to finish on all the matters that they went over. The topics that they go over during these meetings and they kind of list out a time frame of when they're going to be talking about what and how long they're going to be discussing what in these topics. That's kind of how these meetings go. So there were issues amongst these topics that they wanted to bring up in regards to the reptiles as well as public speaking areas where people could speak about certain air matters that, that maybe necessarily weren't even going to be listed on the meeting agenda itself. So regardless, I just kind of listened to kind of hear what issues were going on in terms of the matters that both affected like the reptile community and the animal community. Starting when I was learning how to keep and breed reptiles. And similarly, like 10 years ago now, I have been feeling the same feelings that I felt just like when I was learning about reptiles and upkeep for breeding projects. Being completely ignorant, but learning more and more each day. And things are finally coming together and making sense for me. I mean, it's all about researching, problem solving, and learning at the end of the day. And I have an amazing teacher and great friends that have been constantly giving me insight to really help me learn the basics of the guitar. And honestly, I really feel like I'm cementing a foundation that's really going to help me grow and learn and improve as a guitar player and learning with music in general. It's so rewarding to see my progress and I'm truly excited to see what the future holds and how I grow. You're being such a good girl, Willow. Stuff like that for plants and stuff, so planters in these things. It's gonna be really cool. I'm super excited about how these look. And this is kind of the way that I wanna go. I really wanna have something that is like the piece of the jungle in here for the reptiles. It's going to be great for them. I think it's going to be super exciting as well too to come in here and see right when you walk into this room, these awesome enclosures all decked out and naturalistic. And that's kind of what I wanna do going forward for all of my animals. But this would be something really cool down the line to make for Eddie. How cool is this enclosure? Nice cool water basin right here that they can soak in, but this would be the ideal setup for someone like Eddie, my Burmese python. Check out in here, guys. So there's actually a gaboon viper in here, a West African gaboon viper in here. So can you see the gaboon viper in here? Kind of give you a second to check it out. That's right, it's right over here. So look at that. It completely blends in with the leaf litter, but that is a venomous African gaboon viper right there. Easy right now, she's making her way over to the food. We'll kind of watch her for a second. But yeah, like I said, these guys are a medium-sized tortoise. Uh, Daisy is about, I would say, man, I think, I think she is about three and a half, four years old offhand straight to the watermelon she knows what she likes but these guys get a very diet of fruits vegetables and occasionally also protein as well too which is either uh, insects sometimes tuna um, chicken they love and just really nice natural meats for these guys is for the person taking care of your animals all great things I definitely would recommend doing those things so keep those things in mind if you are having someone come and check in on your animals always making sure beforehand that everything is stockpiled up on anything that the person may need so any of the food supplies that the animal will require any of the maintenance supplies that the animal will require as well all great things to have on hand and stockpiled beforehand before the person comes to make sure that everything is there if the person does require certain things so making sure that you have all the basic supplies that are needed while you're gone on your trip so the person can come in pick up the certain supplies and do their thing with that with convenience and ease that's always important as well too. so that is something to also consider with a big snake is the large prey items first how are you going to store large prey items if you're going to buy in bulk you're going to probably need a chest freezer rather than your freezer at home because it's going to be a lot more more storage that's going to be taken up in the freezer. Now, not only are you going to have to invest in potentially a chest freezer for these items and how you're going to store these big, large prey items, but the price tag on these are, is going to be big as well. Now, you may get some wholesale prices from certain people. A lot of people are going to be paying retail value for the prey items, and that is going to come at a costly tag, that's for sure. So for tiny snakes, maybe it's going to be a few bucks here and there, but for large snakes, we're talking hundreds to thousands a year in just prey items for these guys and i mean that's the investment you got to make right for having a big snake like this but i tell you it's worth it and you don't want to skimp out on meals for these guys you want these guys nice and healthy so that item is something that's important for these guys and if you're not able to take care of that that's a big portion of them that's the foundation of snake keeping is the food for these guys bye see you guys and like i said light waiting later in the video because that's when i'm going to show you when i offer them food just how different they take food something very unique 
into their personality traits. It all fits them perfectly. So really cool to see. Stick around for that. Let's get Wendy. All right, and here is Wendy, and she is my little Spitfire, that's for sure. And the reason I'm using a hook is I really don't feel like taking a bite from her right now. <laughs> I have taken a bite from her in the past, and it is not fun. These guys definitely do pack a punch, that's for sure. Beautiful snake, though. Oh my gosh, look at the contrast on this girl right here. Super sweet. Normally, she's pretty calm right when she gets out of the enclosure, but since it is feeding day, I know that she's definitely in a mood to eat and you guys are going to see that soon so i definitely want to make sure that this snake knows that she will be fed later and not right now but like the fall and it's perfect it works out great i've never had a problem with that system but this case you're always prepared you're always overstocked and you also save a lot of money at the end of the day from my experiences so definitely look into bedding in bulk is what i recommend too and this works for all different types of bedding not just like the cypress mulch so definitely look into this for whatever type of bedding you personally use obviously once this here is what I'm going to use is some black or brown silicone that's safe and doesn't have any mold inhibitors in it or anything like that. We're going to be putting that in here as well to cover up the foam from this yellowish look that it's going to come out to be. And it's going to be something that's going to literally look out of the jungle and blend in. So you guys can kind of get the picture of what I'm doing here for the place. He is definitely a spitfire, that's for sure. So he will definitely take a chomp out of me if I went close, especially when he's in shed. He's definitely easier to get out when he's in shed, so that's good at least. But man, guys, he is looking incredible. And I am so excited to see once he's out of shed, those really vibrant emerald greens on him. It's kind of blending in with his surroundings right now. Good with snakes and really knows their stuff about snakes. That's who you want to kind of go to. Right? You don't want someone that's going to be forcing these things on you and throwing a snake in your hands or whatever. That's not the positive way of going about things. It's about gradually going at your pace and not feeling forced or pressured or anything like that. And just learn and getting educated and then kind of going from there but that's probably where you want to start is being with you and that person and no snake in sight and just talking and answering your questions and going back and forth and having a conversation that way I think that is very important I think that's a great first step for sure males going in every single one yeah that may be something that's probably a bad thing but because it was only the two females I mean I'm not too upset about that whatsoever and in hindsight I think it's just helpful for me this year to take off from having babies this year and worrying about shows and everything and really honing into what I need to do and that's more so with the naturalistic setups building enclosures reamplifying this room and then preparing for the next room that's potentially happening sooner rather than later is my hope and just kind of going along with those things like I said everyone is doing fantastic in this room if you saw my prior build this past month we did just finish these arboreal cages the throughout I've been trying to go this year is really honing in and making some really cool stellar setups for the animals that I currently own so stuff and I love these combinations so this was just a really cool snake that I really couldn't pass up I mean I passed up so many in the past and when I saw this one I was like this has to be the one one. and ironically enough I did pass this one up and it was actually last November when I did and I was like oh man I really regret that but then when I picked him up finally in the spring I was like man I am so happy that I got this snake so really happy that I did I mean he is a stunner for sure the next suggestion that I have for this list is actually ball pythons now being a snake person that's no surprise to you guys I mean I work with a whole bunch of ball pythons here so I'm kind of partial to those species but the reason that I would say they sit at number three is for or maybe a couple different reasons the first reason being that they do get a little bit larger in size so they're probably going to be the largest reptile out of all of these species maxing at females max about like maybe four and a half to five feet sometimes but they normally stay between three to four feet on average that would be the first reason is they are probably about a medium-sized species of snake which actually can be a beneficial thing because it's easier to maybe handle that snake as well too because it has more body mass to it down a rabbit hole of information of different species all the different different people that were working with different animals, all the different content that was being created, all the different elements that you could get into and dive into all relating to the reptile hobby, which I all thought was really, really cool and inspiring because there was a whole bunch of different elements that I would love to implement and I have been implementing and still trying to implement to this day to do some really cool things with these animals and inspire other people too, which is the huge thing as well. To, I mean, you can see that this is a true black pastel pattern on here. It doesn't show that pied patterning on here in the mix whatsoever but you have that really unique looking ringer right here which shows a little bit of white kind of like a pied right here and then you see the break in patterning over here it's really cool to see those kind of things and normally when you produce something that's 100% head pied you're going to see one of two indicators normally on average one being a ringer and this one really stands out compared to most 
I've seen and it's a really really nice one on both sides as you can see it's a fully rounded ringer on there and that's just a break in the patterning right there which is a nice indicator some other jeans also put ringers into things as well too so don't think it's just a head pie thing as well but another really cool thing as well is the clean bellies on here without any pattern on them with black track marks on the sides this one doesn't necessarily show too much of the black track marks but some other patternings and morphs will thorough research before getting the animal and even considering it coming into your home is doing your research will give you the better peace of mind when you're considering things like do you have the capability to take on this animal financially beyond just purchasing the animal itself are you able to cover also all the necessities for the animal that you're willing to purchase is when I went outside and doing those kinds of things so that was really cool there was also some different people that would do like educational programmings and stuff like that that I would go and watch as well too during the summer months at different events and stuff like that like mainly for the 4th of July and whatever there would be someone that would have like a big Burmese python and a whole bunch of different other species as well too so seeing those shows getting hands-on with those animals was also a really special thing for me to have a reaction some more than others depending on the reaction so kind of looking into those kind of things is also pretty important that I want to say as well too but doing your research on the snake is definitely something I would recommend doing beforehand but yeah like I said the western hognose snake is a fantastic species of snake for a smaller living space that's for sure forms folks I mean you could be going on Facebook or online in general and you could be seeing photos of animals that are not even theirs they're pulling these off of Facebook or Instagram or other videos or whatever they are claiming that these animals are their actual own when that simply is not the case so people commonly will post a high-valued animal for something that's super super cheap pythons that I do have remaining for the year vending at the Jerrine Forest Junkies booth which is right when you walk in the door you just turn right you'll see me right over there so definitely come say hi if I'm not there I'm probably just walking around at the show so definitely come flag me down I want to get to meet you guys for sure but yeah I'm so excited like I said and Tinley's just a big big social event so I'm just really excited to go highlight some of the animals there go see what we can find I'm going to definitely be making a shopping list for sure of things that I'm looking to get and I think that's always the best way to go about these shows is go for a mission or just kind of go and browse at the end of the day too you know but obviously doing your research and kind of knowing what you're trying to get and stuff and preparing that the best you can beforehand that's always important too we've done a couple videos on that in the past here's already these so infectious already I mean it's just a really cool time and exciting time to always come to these shows because everyone is just so lively and excited both vendors and people that are coming here as well so it's going to be a great show day I can already tell in a <laughs> 2300 2300 Doug number 2400 2400 what North Mark 2400 This is an orange, green, yellow belly, green sickle. That is so it's, probably it's, the brightest snake I've ever seen. Yeah, it's <laughs> the best green sickle I've ever produced by Holy high. cow. And just, you know, the, it's nice orange color on yeah. it. Yeah. This is going to look fantastic as an adult miss my mark or I didn't even know about them so this was the first thing I got and it is from DDB corn snakes and this is from Dwayne this is a really really cool heliconia corn snake male and I was just blown away first time I saw these a couple years ago just the beautiful beautiful salmon colors that pop up on these guys seeing a reptile that's lost or if you have ever lost a reptile it may help you in the near future it's definitely something I never wish upon anyone it's definitely very very stressful especially when again this snake is like super super tiny but luckily he's very very bright in coloration so I think that was the main thing that I had going for me was worrying about that beautiful snake I love this snake I was so excited to get this snake I love hunter and milk snakes I didn't know if I was ever going to find this snake again it was so so tiny and uh let me pull him out right now so here he is right here here is that little sneaky guy and you can see just how tiny this little guy is i mean he's literally a worm <laughs> and he was just whipping around like he is right now and that's exactly what they're notorious for along with peeing on me so hopefully he doesn't pee on me again but if he does it is what it is started the breeding and then throughout the years i definitely had to hold off and taper off my projects for a while because i 
I was moving, I was in school, definitely wasn't in the cards to fit a breeding project and produce babies and everything that goes along with that. It's a big commitment for sure. So I held off on breeding for a while, but now, I mean, now these past couple years, I've been full swing in the breeding projects and doing things with these animals. And I'm super stoked about that. We invested in the animals that we did on a smaller scale to incorporate with the animals that we currently own as well too. So that's what we did. We got this corn snake, we got the milk snake, we have a couple geckos as well too that we picked up as well. We have some ball pythons obviously that we have in the collection that we can bring as well. So we have all different colors, shapes, and sizes of species that we can bring to these shows and really inspire people, whether they're adults or children, to do some really cool things with. Camp. The first thing I would do is identifying the problem that you are having with your snake in terms of it being aggressive. So whether it's you're putting your hand in the enclosure and it is striking at you or if you are just walking by and it is striking at you or if it's out of the enclosure and it's striking at you whatever the case may be identifying the problem is always going to be the first crucial step that put it with my favorite morph being pied I'm just excited to see what we're going to be creating in the future with the females that we have and all the other genes that are in there so we're going to be whipping up some really cool things in the future and I'm probably going to hold back a good amount of those things truthfully because that is what I want to work with so definitely recommend temp guns as well as these guys right here these guys are also great for anyone that is handling snakes or any sort these guys are also great to have on hand as well so you can never go wrong with gifting out a snake hook these girls are all up to size they are doing great and they are putting on tremendous weight already and by next year by next fall I am sure these girls are going to be ready and this boy is going to be ready as well too he was a little bit of a slower grower for me at the beginning he wasn't taking food as often as I would like him to uh, maybe two meals a month rather than four and that's totally fine. I mean, he's definitely on a better track right now. It's incredible. And I'll show you that right now with Willow as well. So let me put Wendy back and I'll bring out Willow. And then afterwards, we'll show off Wally at the end. So stick around. Let's pull out Willow. All right. And if you guys have been around the channel long enough, you definitely know who this girl is. And you've seen her grow into who she is today. This big, big Walma female right here. This is Willow right here. My absolute sweetheart. I love this girl to death. Future. And how cool is it going to be for kids to see this animal and get to feel like up and down his body and see how really cool these snakes really are because we don't want people to grow up hating and fearing snakes we want people to be loving snakes and that's the ultimate goal at the end of the day is not getting these kids wanting a Burmese python per se but having a better understanding and respect for these snakes and that's the ultimate goal once we start doing educational programs and with working with Eddie like we have been doing I think he's going to be a tremendous animal ambassador for sure you know it never gets old every single year I say this it's so cool looking back and seeing all the different things that we have done this past year it's so rewarding to see all the different things that we've done project wise things that the animals are now enjoying as well too like we said those are boil cages things are really really cool to see those kind of things in my personal book and I'm sure for other people too it's really cool to see that other people are inspired by these projects as well too from what I've heard so that's also something that's really cool and as we move into 2024 that's what we're going to be striving to continue do is improving this reptile room, improving animal well-being, and making sure that we're inspiring other people to do the same thing as well too. I have so many cool projects that have just been cooking for at least two years now also as well that I want to be doing, but we just have to move into one, a bigger space, which hopefully will happen this year. That's my goal utmost that we're going to be doing something like that. So we're going to get a brand new reptile room, hopefully in the works this upcoming year. So stay tuned for that. Along with if that goes through, we're going to have some other fun projects that are going to go down the grapevine with that kind of plan going into works but if we're going to be staying here for a little bit as well I have some really cool things in the works as well too along with again leave your suggestions down below because I want to hear those as well it's not going to stop there like I said there are some things that were shortcomings last year that I want to make sure I'm doing more of this year again I want to do more traveling kind of videos I know those don't really do necessarily well but I want to change the flow of that I really want those to hit really really well and I really want people to see just what's out there in the world I think it's really exciting exciting to do those kind of things, get up close and personal and learn a whole bunch for me and for you guys. I want to do those types of things. I think it's really cool to do those things as well. And it's just really cool to get out there and see the world and see all the 
things out there and see animals living in their natural environment. Beyond traveling videos though, there are other things that I want to do more of this upcoming year. For example, collaborative videos with other people as well. I really want to do that and really do some more community-based stuff. That's kind of where I'm going with a lot of these things is really trying to do collaborative and community-based work. And really that's my goal and where I personally want to be heading with a lot of my content too is doing those types of things. I think it's great. I think it's important as well too to stay very positive in this community and keep those relationships with a lot of people and grow the community as well too and inspire other people to be reptile lovers rather than reptile haters. That's what we want to do at the end of the day. So doing those types of things with animal outreach with the programs that we're going to be hopefully starting this upcoming year as well as doing more collaborative videos with other content creators and other people in the reptile and animal world. That's also something that's very important to me as well. Did some really cool ones in the past as you saw with Brian Barczyk doing some really fun videos with him. A good friend of mine for many many years now. Shout out to you Brian and all of your crew and family out there. I am thinking and praying about you guys every single day and uh, I know you guys are fighting a tough battle out there and you have some big dreams that are unfolding right now and it is just really exciting to see all that just coming to life for sure. So your vision is truly coming to life Brian and we're in your corner. We love and support you. I know you've been battling one hell of a year for sure and we're here with you no matter what. So kudos to you Brian. Stay strong and we are here for you. So yeah more collaborative work is definitely very important. Doing things like that I know was important for me and also Brian said it was also really special to him that I was able to do that with him when we did those kind of videos right before anything happened with him health wise. That was really special to me so I was really really fortunate to do those types of things with him but I want to do more of those types of things with other people in the future as well too. So I hope this coming year my goal is to be traveling a lot more going to different reptile shows all across the country new ones that I haven't seen as well and see what is out there and meet some new people as well too I'm really excited about that as well so more collaborative work more traveling videos that's my main goals but like I said we're just going to let this year just kind of play out not going to be doing some really extensive goal making or anything like that I just want to get on a nice level ground and just kind of build off of that have a nice solid foundation first and again it's not out of lack or drive or passion or any of those things or lack of ideas it's simply just out of really wanting to balance my life and really make sure that everything is to a proper point that we can really build off of a solid foundation really setting out to do and achieve everything the right way with all of the focus being on the animal's well-being and my personal well-being and everyone in my life's well-being as well too. Really making sure that all those things are first and foremost and then building up and making the things the best that they can be. That's the ultimate goal. You can't really do those types of things if those things aren't the main focus at the beginning of it all and that's what we want to make sure we're continuing to do. And then after that we're going to see how things play out and then we'll build up from there. But yeah, that's basically my goals going into 2024 is just staying steady and building from there. And maybe some of you guys can relate to those types of things. So if that's the case, let me know what your goals are going into 2024. I want to hear those things from you as well, too. So definitely leave those in the comments down below. Otherwise, guys, those are my plans. We also have some really exciting breeding projects in the works. We do have some confirmed locks with ball pythons, Stimson's pythons. I'm super excited. Fingers crossed that this year we get into the breeding side of things, getting back into the saddle of that. That's going to be really exciting. Didn't breed much this year, but what we bred is going to be exciting for sure. So really stoked about those things but yeah otherwise though it's all about just maintaining the well-being of myself the animals and everyone as well too and just moving into this year and having a really good year that's my goal going into 2024 and i'm sticking to it so otherwise guys like i said i appreciate all of you guys from the bottom of my heart thank you guys for your ongoing support i'm stoked for this coming year i'm really anticipating it and i'm really feeling that this is going to be a really good year for sure but thank you guys so much again for watching and all your support you guys mean the world to me and if you guys could do me a few favors if you could like this video subscribe to the channel I would greatly appreciate it as well as share this video with a friend as well too maybe they would like to catch up on some of the topics that I recapped this prior year and maybe they would like to see some really cool content in the future because we are going to be posting consistently on Mondays as we move into 2024 as well so definitely stay tuned for those things make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss one of the videos as well as definitely check us out on our social media as well and happy new year to you all I hope you guys have a safe and fun rest of your holiday. And until next time, we will see you guys soon. Take care.